here on Good and Plenty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Okay, so first things first, elephant in the room. We got a grow light. I'm literally so excited to have made this little investment in my channel because now I don't have to film in front of a south facing window from only like 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. and I feel like I'm on a movie set. So second of all, I guess I'll tell you what this video is about. I figured now was a good time to take you guys through my next couple of days where I will be kind of just making sure all of my plants are 100% ready for fall and winter and doing some prep work for that. Just to put my video into context, I live in Philly on the East Coast and right now it is like mid-September, so I have about two weeks left of like official summer, but I kind of just want to get things rolling so that when it is official fall, I will have everything in place. Everyone is going to have a little bit of a different preparation routine depending on where in the world you live, what kind of plants you have, and kind of what your home looks like. This video is not going to cover dormancy plants and tips for winter spring specifically those are going to be future videos that I will make so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell for those future videos so the first thing that I did that I will not be showing in this video is me repotting any plants that I did not want sitting in the same pot for the next two seasons and then also doing just a little bit of top dressing that needed it. If you want to learn more about how I did that and what plants I decided to do that with, I will link the latest Soothing Sunday here where I did all of that stuff, I explained everything, and I played with worm castings. <laughs> so go ahead and check that out. Now the next big thing that I want to do is to prep my indoor greenhouse. This is my first season doing that and I'm kind of excited to set it up. So I'm going to move us all to my living slash spare room. It's kind of like, I don't know. I don't really film in there because I don't like what it looks like and I hate the audio, but we're just gonna rough it out so I can show you guys what I do there. Okay, so I will see you in there. Hello. So we are in like the forbidden room with the terrible audio and lighting. I'll keep the talking short and sweet. Basically, I have this IKEA shelving unit. I'll put a picture of the kind here. And they make this cover for this shelving unit, IKEA does. I'll also put a picture of this here. It's just a cover meant to protect it outdoors or just from dust and stuff. But it also can create a greenhouse effect. So what I'm going to do is just put this cover on the shelving unit. I will share with you guys some of the benefits of why I do that. But essentially, I just want to keep it humid and warm in here during the fall and winter. So benefits to this greenhouse, like I said, are higher humidity levels and warm temperatures for your plants during the drier and colder months. And I really like this setup because the LED lights do not overheat so it is safe and there are ventilation holes in the cover to allow airflow which is important. And of course there's many ways to recreate this but this is just the inexpensive and flexible way that I am trying this winter but there are many other ways to give it a go. Hi everyone and welcome to day two of fall slash winter prep. Basically today I kind of wanted to talk about reorganizing your plants so that all of their needs are met in their location for the fall and winter months. The first thing I want to note is plants on windowsills. Plants on windowsills might need to be either pulled back or moved during the fall and winter because the cold temperatures and frost on your window might make certain plants, especially tropical plants, decline. I do keep a lot of plants on my windowsill during the fall and winter, 
but I keep a close eye on them and if I see a plant starting to decline, I might rotate out the plants there. Another thing to consider is where your space heaters and vents are because it might be different from where your current AC unit or fan is located. So if you are putting a space heater in a new spot, just make sure to move any plants away from that warm, hot draft because Plants who love moisture in the air are going to absolutely hate that and you will get crispy tips in no time. And the last thing that you need to consider is the fact that the days are shorter. So therefore, even the plants in windowsills are going to experience a decrease in light supply. Kind of just basic science. You're probably going to want to invest or consider getting grow lights and led grow lights are definitely the way to go they are cost effective and they do the job and they don't overheat so believe it or not i do have a product to share with you guys this video is not sponsored but i was sent a product that i want to share let me get it so Housebright did send me this grow light bulb and I actually switched out the miracle grow light bulb that was in this little setup with the light bulb that they sent me because I got to choose the color temperature that I wanted. So they sell warm white light bulbs, which I liked a lot better than the bright white miracle Grow light bulb that I had in there. I really think that this looks better and is efficient for keeping your plants happy and healthy throughout the fall and winter. I do have a handy dandy link for you guys that I will put in the description box. So if you buy a house bright grow light through that link, you can save 10% on your purchase. Kind of cool, kind of fun. It is not an affiliate link, so I do not make money from it. Full transparency, that is just there for you guys if you are interested in a house bright light bulb. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday, the last day of our fall prep. Today we are going to be doing leaf cleaning, which I feel like is hit or miss with people. I think there is a group that loves leaf cleaning and a group that hates it. I don't really like it that much, but we are going to be doing it because it's important. Why is it important? Well, first of all, clean leaves just look better. They make our plants look happier and healthier and it's just better to look at. It will also help your plants soak in more light during the shorter winter days. As your leaves start to collect dust and filth, there is going to be like a layer between the actual leaf and the light source. So you want to minimize that gap as much as possible, especially during the winter months. So cleaning your leaves will help your plants soak in as much light as possible. And lastly, with the leaf cleaning solution that I use that I will share with you guys, it is also a bit of a pest preventative, which is really important during the winter months because it is dry. Guess what? Spider mites love that. And speaking as someone who just found spider mites on her plants, do preventative care. <laughs> the mixture that I am using, I have it in this little tiny bottle. This is definitely way too tiny for what I like, but I was a bad YouTuber and did not buy the proper supplies in time because the spray bottle I was using is now filled with a bleach solution that I obviously do not want to use on my plants. So I have it in this tiny bottle. In here, this Leaf solutions can really be whatever you want them to be, but I kind of like mine to work as a little bit of a pest preventative, as I said, and also just a nice little shiny leaf cleaner. So what I have in here is maybe one fifth of the bottle is my Captain Jack's uh, pest control solution and that is already diluted. So that's why I put so much of it in. But if you have a concentrate, you're gonna only wanna put in a couple drops, otherwise it'll be too strong. Then I went ahead and put in just a tiny little splash of soap and the soap will help cut through any grease or grime that has built up on your leaves. Then I filled it up almost all the way to the top with distilled water and you wanna use distilled water, not tap water because 
one of the things you're probably trying to clean off is mineral buildup and guess what tap water has a lot of minerals in it so you want to use some kind of distilled spring filtered water in here and then i kind of topped it off with just a little bit of tea tree essential oil mostly because i was feeling fancy but also because it smells really good and essential oils help add a little bit of like a shine when you're done cleaning everything so that's my mixture and what I'm gonna do now is take a look at my plants see what is not looking so cute and then spray the tops and the bottoms of the leaves with this solution and wipe it down with a towel preferably use a microfiber cloth because it will not scratch your leaves but I'm just using a rag that I had around here some of your leaves are going to be a little bit harder to clean than others my monstera is going to be pretty easy for example because I just spray it all over and I can give it a wipe the leaves are fairly hardy but things like begonias are going to be a little bit trickier where I might not even use the solution on it I might just give it a little bit of a pat down do what you think is right but at the end of the day you just want to make Make sure that your plants are going to be clean for the fall and winter of course you can do this year round I definitely recommend doing that but it becomes even more important as we go into the dry seasons while I am going through and cleaning all of the leaves I will also be looking for any dead sheaths or leaves that I can cut off and clean up so that everybody is looking fresh okay so that is going to be it for today's video thank you so much for watching I know that this can me a lot of different steps and I kind of crammed it into a short amount of time because I wanted to make this video but I am assuming most of you are not making videos about fall prep and can definitely spread this out over a longer period of time. As always please comment down below if you have any questions if I didn't explain anything clearly enough I'm sure that happens and stay tuned for the dormancy video that will come sometime soon maybe this month so thank you guys so much again and I will see you in my next video.